Hey everybody, uh, in this particular video we're going to be talking about DFAR 7012, which is part of the DFAR 70 series. And if you haven't already, check out the DFAR 7019, 7020, and 7021 videos. Um, specifically, DFAR 7012 is a little bit older than the other ones that I just mentioned. DFAR 7012 was more or less in the public conversation and federal discourse in the 2016, or at least the height of it, in 2016 time frame and was put into effect in the late 2017 uh, time frame. And uh, nevertheless, some people ask the distinction between DFAR 7012 and let's say CMMC, which can be found much of which in DFAR 7021, those requirements. Uh, two big distinctions, first and foremost, uh, DFAR 7012 is more or less a, a pre-award type requirement. In many cases, uh, organizations are having to put in their RFP bids or their proposals uh, their, their self-attestation, saying that they have met the requirements for DFAR 7012, and that's at the time that they're submitting their bids. Whereas CMMC requires a third-party audit, which gets into a, a different distinction there, uh, requires a third-party audit uh, to, to happen and that certification be qualified at time of award, meaning that certification will need to be an SPRS at time of award uh, for that contract to officially be awarded to that supplier. So nevertheless, getting into the second distinction, again, it is self-attestation when it comes to DFAR 7012, submitting that into your proposal and telling the government, I have met the requirements at that point in time, whereas again, CMMC is a third party assessing the organization against various requirements. Some other distinction, speaking of requirements, uh, D4712 requires NIST 800-171 to be implemented, implemented on information systems uh, that basically have or house CUI um, or more or less that are in scope within D4712. And so NIST 8171 has 110 controls, whereas CMMC Level 3, which a good majority of contractors will need to be at, CMMC Level 3 has 130 uh, practices is what they call them, um, as compared to D4712 with 110 controls related to NIST 8171. Some other distinctions, reporting. So in D4712, there's some reporting requirements around if there's some sort of incident that you turn over to the government, uh, details and things of that nature about your information systems so that way they can do proper analysis and investigation. And that includes turning over malicious software or malicious code that maybe has entered into your, into your environment as a part of a breach or as a part of an incident. And also too, if you're using like a cloud service provider, that cloud service provider is also gonna have to turn over certain forensic images, as well as other details about the architecture and things that are happening at the data center layer. And uh, nevertheless, that is a part of why organizations have had to more, uh, distinguish between commercial Office 365 or Microsoft 365, between commercial, the commercial offering and GCC and GCC High, and determining which one is best for them based off some of those reporting requirements. And then lastly, uh, D4712 requires that you have a system security plan and a plan of action milestone, SSP and a POAM. And that's some of the distinctions there. So let's get into some other topics. So D4712 also specifies some certain data types that we need to control or protect. Uh, the first being proprietary information or company proprietary information. There's also controlled technical information, otherwise known as CTI. There's controlled and classified information, otherwise known as CUI or CUI as some folks call it. And then there's also some specifications about the type of systems that we need to protect. Type 1 being systems that are maintained, managed, etc. on behalf of the government. Um, and then there's other IT systems that are mainly on the company side that are not uh, more or less implemented, maintained, managed uh, on behalf of the government. It's really just a part of basically being a contractor, those IT systems that may have CUI, CTI, and proprietary information in them. So with DFAR 7012, those type one, type two systems, type one, DISA SRG, those requirements are gonna to apply to those systems that are maintained, managed on behalf of the government, as well as NIST 853, those controls are gonna to need to apply to type one systems. Type two systems, on the other hand, fall back on that NIST 800-171 and those 110 controls. And again, those are systems that are not managed, maintained on behalf of the government, and typically they're corporate systems. 
Then also too, you got reporting requirements. We talked about those earlier. Reporting is gonna have to go into the DOD uh, Cyber Crimes Center, otherwise known as C3. Those reports are gonna have to be within 72 hours of an incident. And then also too, they're gonna need to go back 90 days within those systems, looking again at those forensic images and some of the, the details and information about the incident within your system. You need to have some access, again, going back 90 days. This video has been, been about DFAR 7012. There's other videos in the DFAR 70 series. Go check them out. I hope this has been informative.